from who, through who, in who. Yoo-hoo! Hi, this is Daryl Chesser. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, today I'm going to be doing another video on a writing I've done. I'm going to read it to you mostly and uh, hopefully uh, won't get too long. But uh, this one is entitled From Through In. I know, kind of weird. Let's get started. We're going to start with uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 4 through 6. So then, about eating foods sacrificed to idols, Paul is writing to the Corinthian church. He says, we know that an idol is nothing at all in the world, and that there is no God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or earth, as indeed there are many gods, small g, and many lords, small l. Yet for us, there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came, and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came, and through whom we live. I wanted to show you something that Paul says at the end of this passage. He mentions there is but one God, the Father, from whom all things came. Notice the words, from whom. Speaking of the Father in heaven, the creator and sustainer of all things, of all life. All things are from our Father in heaven. Now, compare that with the next phrase, and there is but one Lord Jesus Christ through whom all things came. The use of the word one when referring to both the Father and the Son denote harmony with Deuteronomy 6.4, which is the Shema or whatever they call it, the, the Shema, the Shema, the, but it's this one. It's uh, Deuteronomy 6.4. And it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord, he is one. The Lord, he is one. Paul just gets finished writing to us that the Father is one. There's only one. And there's only one Lord Jesus Christ. They're one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. From whom, through whom, and in whom. All right. Let's go to the next thing. Jesus spoke these words to the Pharisees in John chapter 10, verse 25 through 30. Let's turn over there. Jesus answered, I did tell you. They'd asked him, hey, are you the, are you the Christ? Are you the Messiah? You're whatever. And he answered and he said, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my father's name testify about me. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life. I give them eternal life. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. That's including Jesus Christ. The Father in heaven is greater than all, and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. It's that double chalupa we've talked about before, where you're wrapped up in Jesus' hand and is wrapped up in God's hand. Now, that's like a double chalupa. You are snug. It's not coming out. So, that's pretty good. All right. He ends that passage with, I and the Father are one, just in case you were wondering, is Daryl off base? Is God one? Is this the same thing as Deuteronomy cha chapter 6, the Shema, the Shema? Uh, yeah. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, he is one. 
one, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one Father, one Son, one Holy Spirit, but one. Yeah, it's a triune mystery. All right, let's move forward. The statement was pretty much the last straw for the Pharisees that day. Someone, someone suggesting that they were God's son, thus equating himself with the Father in heaven was a bit too much for them. But as Jesus said, they were not his sheep. That's not, that's not a sheep. They were just like the people in the wilderness when God brought them out of Egypt. So many of them were stubborn, still worshiping their own gods and their own self-righteousness, not believing the eternal God who, have, who had done astounding things in their midst. I mean, a cloud by day, a fire by night. Uh, there was water in a rock that followed them through the wilderness. Manna came down from the sky and quail and meat came in at night for 30 or 40 years. He protected them and kept them. That's amazing. You know, it's a couple, three million people out there. <clears throat> but they didn't believe him. So we see that all things are from God, the Father in heaven, and all things come to us through or by Christ Jesus. And finally, the completion of this mystery, the triune God, the the three in one, is all those things are now in us by the Holy Spirit. What is, you know, the scripture says, the uh, having the hope of glory, uh, the mystery hidden from the foundation of the world, which is Christ in us, the anointing in us, the Holy Spirit of God in us. The same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in us. It will quicken our, uh, uh, our body, right? And so, uh, this is the in us, from the Father, through Jesus Christ, in us, the Holy Spirit working in us. Wow, this is good stuff. Now, since Christ Jesus finished the work at the cross, the Holy Spirit lives in us by faith in Jesus Christ. And we can go directly through Jesus to the Father, the source. No middleman. Jesus is just the door. He opened the door and he's sitting down there with his father on his father's beside his father's throne there at the right hand. He's sitting there and he's saying, yep, these guys are in and boom, we get in. In the name of Jesus, we go to the father, right? Now, later on, Jesus talks to the disciples and John is writing this. Now, John wrote this gospel uh, after Paul died. I mean, this was way back, way, you know, way late. And he comes back and he writes this gospel. And so his perspective is pretty interesting. Read this. Uh, Jesus is speaking to his disciples in this John chapter 16, verse 23 through 24, and uh, then 26 through 28. He says, in that day after the cross, because Jesus is right before the cross talking to his disciples, he goes, in that day, you will no longer ask me. You know, Jesus multiplied these fish. Jesus healed these people. Jesus, you know, stop this storm. Uh, Jesus, uh, I don't know, whatever it is you need, a cheeseburger. I, I'd raise my vision a bit if I were you. Anyway, verily truly, Jesus said then, I tell you, my father will give you whatever you ask in my name. The, from whom we go to the father, the source, in the name of Jesus, so we who have the Holy Spirit in us because of faith in the finished work of Christ Jesus and God's Son, that Holy Spirit, now we have the righteousness of God by faith, and we can boldly enter through Christ Jesus, through the flesh that was the veil ripped in two. His ripped apart flesh on that cross is the entryway into this presence of God and his blood washed us clean. And now we can go to, as Hebrews says, the, uh, the throne of grace and mercy boldly to obtain grace and mercy in the, in the time of need. So we go straight from the Holy Spirit in us through Jesus Christ into the source and from the source in Jesus name, we get Whatever we've asked Jesus, asked the Father 
in Jesus' name, dwelling up in us, and boom, begins to happen. All right, does that make sense? From, through, in. Now let's go a little further. Jesus said in John, until now, before the cross, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete. In that day, you will ask in my name. He says, I'm not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Now, because of the finished work of Christ and our receiving the Holy Spirit of, God, Spirit of God in us, we can approach God boldly as sons and daughters to help, to find grace and mercy in the time of need. The Father came looking for us. We were dead in our trespasses and sins and ignorant of God completely. But he sent Jesus to become a man just like us because he so loved the world. Now we are one with the Father through faith in Christ Jesus and have God's Holy Spirit, his seal of approval in us. God is pretty good. He's, he's really, really good. He's just that good. Okay, he's everything good. Before I leave today, if you've not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's a verse that uh, the disciples had been put in jail overnight and a miracle happens and the jail, all the jail doors open, an earthquake opened them and all the chains fell off of all the prisoners and no one left. But the jailer was freaking out. and he That's a death penalty back then. And he comes running to, Jesus, uh, to these disciples. This is after the cross. And he says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now, he was talking about his life. He wasn't talking about some spiritual, you know, I want my sins forgiven and I want to go to heaven. That's awesome. But right now, I've got an express train that direction. I'd really rather stay here with my family and live. And then we can talk this other business. Well, the, the two are radically entwined with God. Do you understand sozo salvation is basically, it's the same word no matter what you apply it to. God can save you. God can save you in your problems today. God can save you in your sickness today. God can save you in your mess because he loves you. Because he sent Christ to die for us because he loves us. Anyway, the apostles looked at him and said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. And so that's what I'm asking you today. If you have not believed, I want you today to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, to believe that he came to earth as a man, to believe that he went to that cross, to believe that he died for you, and to believe that God raised him from the dead. And I want you to confess with your mouth, Jesus is the Messiah. He is the Lord. And the Bible tells us, and you will be saved. For anyone that asks, he says, whoever asks, God will answer it. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. Thank you. Ask the Father and say, Father, give me your salvation. I want it from you through Jesus Christ, and I want your Holy Spirit in me, and I receive it today. I declare Jesus Christ is Lord. And guess what? Welcome to the kingdom. Welcome to the kingdom.